Welcome back, guys. We are finally going to be talking about the last episode of Ahsoka Season 1. And wow, do I have a lot to say about this episode. Not only about that, but the season. Now, I want to get into the episode first. My thoughts on where they're going to go from here and the season as a whole. So, the starting of this episode, because we're going to get right into it, man. Because I, I, st- I got like goosebumps slash jitters right now because of this episode. But I want more. Now, I will say this, that the, the start off of this episode... We see where gr- the Grand Animal Thrawn, he is about ready. The cargo is ready to go. He is about ready to exit. Then the grand- the grandmothers of Dathomir basically state to Morgan that due to her loyalty and due to everything she's done, they basically, long story short, they grant her their power. They give her a power up. They give her another sword. So she gets a very massive power boost. To where she technically becomes, I would say, the fourth sister. And after that happens, you see where Thrawn is even puts in a hit on uh, the gang to basically slow them down. And while this is going on, we see where uh, Ezra is putting together a brand new lightsaber. And him and Yu Yang are kind of going back and forth to like, hey, you know, you need to take your time. He's like, I don't have time. Then... After this, they later find out that, of course, he was the uh, student of Kanan Jarrus, which, again, they did bring him up. And you see how he ga- he gathers another piece to the lightsaber that was originally Kanan's, so it kind of brings it forth, and he actually activates a blue lightsaber. So now, Ezra has a brand new lightsaber, so the green one is now officially Sabine's. Ezra is going back to blue, and when this happens, they do get attacked by TIE fighters. They're able to fend them off but the engines get destroyed at the same time while Sabine is able to pull off one last heroic move and then they have no choice but to use these uh I would say dog like uh I don't want to say mules like dog horses I guess you'd say to to storm I guess the, the castle between Ahsoka Sabine and Ezra so they go to storm the castle of where they're at and long story short guys they finally get there and Thrawn is basically coming up with intact to just rain down and he says Hellfire. So he uses the Imperial ship to shoot down on the ground so he can stop them. They're able to get into the fortress. And when this happens, they are met by night troopers. Now, this this is the scene that really got me, first off. They start fighting off the, uh, the night troopers, which was a great battle. And then as soon as this happens, you see where Thrawn goes to the, grand, to the great mothers and informs them of the power that he was asking them for now the power he's been asking them for for the entirety was to bring the stormtroopers back to life so we finally got to see zombie like versions of stormtroopers that we've seen this in comics we saw this in jedi fallen order with the dathomir sisters which we got to see uh marin do so it was really cool to see that and so you even see ahsoka ask ezra ezra have you seen this before he says no this is new so this is the power of how powerful that they're able to breed to fully bring them back to where they are actually powerful you do have to cut their head off it seems like as well as also they just keep coming back up and they keep you hear bones breaking you see them acting like zombies and it was so cool to where they had to go back up using their lightsabers to go up the stairs and the only way to i would say hold them off was be able to cut the door and shut it and then they do get out eventually but that that was just a very dark cool scene between everything from sabine having to use her lightsaber and shoot as well and i will say even Ezra finally using his lightsaber skills. We haven't seen this, you know, the entire time. So I was like, because again, I was not really caring about Ezra. I was like, dude, I just want to see Balin. I want to see Shin. I want to see Ahsoka. That's what I want to see, which we're going to get into in a moment. But we finally get to, I would say, the the second stage, I guess you would say, of uh, this fortress. And Thrawn tells Morgan that they have throtted, you know, both levels i guess you say from the bottom level to the first level going to the second level and he tells her that you know long live the empire telling her that she's gonna have to be left behind so they can get a chance to escape so soka takes it upon herself to take on morgan tells ezra and sabine to go ahead and go after thrawn and when this happens we see a battle between sabine and ezra against more night troopers almost like 
more evolved versions like beast like i would say for zombie like and they start fighting them and they get the better of them and i will say this that uh they finally are able they almost get defeated and the only thing that stops them is when one actually grabs a hold of sabine and starts choking her she somehow is able to use the force which again i know some people are back and forth about sabine using the force it doesn't bother me a whole lot and it does get stated earlier which again was kind of silly of the reason why ahsoka was kind of back and forth on her training was because she was worried that she was going to use it for bad knees so pretty much like like Anakin that was the reason why that she was worried about training her because she was worried if she trains her what if she becomes another version like Anakin to where she she's going to use her abilities for evil purposes so that pretty much was the gist of that and her and Ahsoka do make up to where she even states that the only person that stood by her ever was her master. And again, anyone that watched Clone Wars, we know what we're talking about. When she was framed by the by the uh, by Asaja Press, not Asaja Press, but um, I, I can't remember her name. I, I, Bar Bar Barris, I believe. Uh, to where she was framed, the Jedi Council uh, disowned her pretty much, and then all that happened. So. Sabine finally is able to use the force and we see where she actually helps Ezra and they have to use both their force abilities to be able to get on the ship because the ship's going. She even tells him, run, I will force push you and then get up on there. You do the same with me. He says, okay. He's able to get on there. He says, okay, come on. But unfortunately, Ahsoka is battling Morgan right now. She does gain the upper hand a little bit, but then she gets throttled by night troopers. So night troopers storm in. She's having to go back. She seems like she, she's pretty much getting overwhelmed by night troopers and Morgan at this point. And what happens is we see where Morgan is actually able to destroy one of her lightsabers. And it seems like Sabine is nowhere to be found it almost looked like she went with ezra but in reality she comes back to help ahsoka to be able to fight off morgan and the night troopers and that was a badass scene i will say that that was a very good scene and then we also see where ezra is waiting for uh any troopers to come up and he does go copy so it does seem like he's pulling the body away which it seemed like he was going to be putting on a trooper's uniform which he does later on in the in the episode and we see finally where ahsoka as well as sabine are able to run off the fortress and go into their jedi starship and be able to escape from the fortress because thrawn wants to destroy the fortress and when he does it destroys every, everything on there so morgan is dead they are able to deliver the final blow Ahsoka is able to kill her, so now Thrawn knows she's dead, and also, of course, the uh, the grandmothers know as well. And right when the starship goes to orbit, you see Thrawn open up a channel and telling her that he was able to calculate everything just from what he learned from Anakin, and he goes to the normal galaxy that we know, and he ends up in the Dathomir atmosphere. So, and we see more ships going to Dathomir. So I think I was right, and among many others in the fandom, that it is the dead Night Sisters or ones within that possible coven of the grandmothers to bring them back to Dathomir and use their magic to bring them fully to life somehow. So I think that was the deal. And of course now Grand Animal Thrawn is back. He's going to gather all forces in the Empire. So we may be seeing that in uh, the the next season of Mandalorian hopefully possibly in Book of Boba Fett they do continue it possibly also in uh, Soka season 2 and then also the movie later on that Dave Filoni is going to be making and directing now again anything can change anything can change at this moment so that is the big question again is what's still in those uh, boxes that could be corpses of the Night Sisters and what's going to happen now that Thrawn is back how is this going to supposedly connect to the damn sequels again i know a lot of people whether you love or hate the sequels we're gonna have to have them connected somehow some way i personally don't care this is really the era to the empire but this was definitely what fans wanted this is not the crap that disney gave us for the sequels that, that i don't care about that i want more of this this left me wanting more so now unfortunately ahsoka and sabine are stuck in this other galaxy ezra is actually able to make it home to the new republic he's actually able to do this he gets off the ship and he's in a stormtrooper's uniform no one knows it's him and chopper 
actually knows and he's able to kind of pet chop her a little bit. He takes off the helmet. Hera sees him and he says, hey, Hera, I'm home. And, and that's the way it ends. And I'm just like, holy crap, man. So what, what's going to happen with this? Like, how are we going to get them back? And Ahsoka and Sabine go to the local, I, I would say the shell turtles or, or shell turtle aliens, however you want to classify them, to not only make sure the ship is repaired, but also gather any kind of resources and use them as allies. And we only see Balin and Shin for like one quick scene. We see Shin, she goes to the night, uh, I would say the raider camp, lifts her lightsaber up in the air. I'm, I'm assuming to possibly become their leader or gather them as allies. So we don't know exactly what's going to happen with Shin at this point. So she pretty much has been disbanded by Balin. Not only with Balin, we got to see one last scene with Ray Stevenson as Balin. So may he rest in peace. He did a great job with this character. Um, I really hope that they continue with this character somehow, some way. Uh, I hope they don't just write off his character somehow. I don't know if they're going to CGI him or they're going to recast him as Balin or another character or another actor as Balin. Since unfortunately he's no longer, Ray Stevens is no longer with us. So I don't know exactly what they're going to do with this character. Hopefully they're going to be able to continue this because we see him on a high mountain. And when they zoom out, we see the father. Mortis, the father of the Mortis Arc. We got to see a full mountain carved of him. So it makes me fully wonder not only also what I almost forgot was the owl of the daughter of Mortis that we kept seeing around Ahsoka was shown once again in this episode because Ahsoka was able to see the owl. So that tells us something right there. Then at the very end of this episode, which left, I, I brought a big smile on my face, and I'll get to that here in a second. We finally got to see a familiar face come back once again. We see where Sabine and Ahsoka are talking about how they were able to get Ezra home. Ah Ahsoka believes that Ezra's home and that they need to be where they all are at when they need to be right now. And they're just looking in the stars, and Sabine stops, and Ahsoka's like, What? She says, I think the light was, she says, just lights in the sky. And Ahsoka turns around and she just smiles. And she turns and walks away, and the camera pans towards Anakin Skywalker as a Force Ghost once again, and that is how it ends. Guys, this made me smile, because not only is this the second time we got to see as Anakin as a Force Ghost since Return of the Jedi, but now that pretty much confirms that that was truly Anakin in the world between worlds trying to guide Ahsoka, guide his apprentice one last time to be able to help her. This brought a huge ass smile on my face. I really like this episode. The problem was I want more. I, I feel like that kid of I want more to consume from this because this is what... Star Wars fans want. This is what Star Wars fans need. This is what we want. And this is not, unfortunately, enough, in my opinion. Eight episodes is not enough. I know a lot of people are going to be wondering, oh, is it really that good? You know, I, I, I don't really care about the statistics. I don't care about how much Disney's making off this. I care about the damn story. That's what I care about. If they're able to continue this story, then maybe, just maybe... This can help Star Wars be better than what it has been within the last however many years. Was every episode perfect of this? No. But it was still enjoyable. It was so good. It was a love letter, in my personal opinion, to fans of the Clone Wars, to the prequels, and to Rebels. And that's what it did. Now again, was there some issues? Yeah, I wasn't probably the biggest fan of, of, of who they got for Ezra, but I'm able to get over it. I think the one that got to play Sabine did very well. Uh, again, still used to Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka, but again, in my personal opinion, Ashley Eckstein will always be Ahsoka to me. That was the first person I heard as Ahsoka, so to me, she will always be Ahsoka. The performances was good. Ray Stevenson was great. I like to see. I want to see more Balin. I want to know more about Balin. I want to know more about Shin. What is she? It, 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 is she, you know, just a normal uh, Force user that turned into what she is now? Same thing with Balin. Who was his master? 
Who trained him? Why did he turn away from the Jedi Order? How did he become a mercenary? It, what is Shin to him? Is that his daughter? Or is this uh, an orphan he found? Or, or, or what? I mean, there's so many unanswered questions to this series that I want to know more about. But I did enjoy this season. I personally enjoyed this. I would say a tad bit more than Obi-Wan. I would say I enjoyed this more than Book of Boba Fett. I enjoyed it more than, I would say, the last season of Mandalorian, in my personal opinion. I know everybody's opinion is going to be different. Guys, go check out Ahsoka if you are Star Wars fans. I personally agree you will enjoy it. If you enjoy the, the prequels, you guys enjoy the originals, you guys enjoy... Uh, I would say Rebels and Clone Wars, definitely check this out. You will not regret it. That is my personal opinion. Uh, I may make some more videos about this later on. Um, I have to let all this sit in. And maybe if I can hear some more theories, come up with some new theories, and see what we got for the future of Star Wars. But Dave Filoni, give this man the damn keys to the kingdom of Star Wars. I don't care. Get Kathleen Kennedy away from this. Let him produce and make everything. This is what I think George Lucas would be proud of this. I think this is something that every Star Wars fan that is a good Star Wars fan, that is a true Star Wars fan, since I would say the originals to the prequels to even dealing with all the stuff that Disney has gave us, I think this is possibly the best thing Disney has given us or that has come from Disney. But either way, those are my thoughts about this. Let me know your thoughts are about this down in the comments. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a big fat like on the video. I would greatly appreciate it. Share this video. Let's talk about it. Let's have great comments down in the comments down below. Let's have a great conversation. What was your thoughts about the season? What was your thoughts about the episode? Did you guys enjoy it? Was it okay? Was it something you would watch again? Is it something you would not watch again? Either way, let me know your thoughts down in the comments, and I'll see you as always on the next one.